Okay. Good evening. We are live. Praise God. I am Overseer M. Alexander with Words for the Soul. And I have a special guest for those who do not know. We have the awesome, amazing, I tell you, he makes my head turn a double tape every time he walks by. None other than my husband, the Bishop Trevor D. Alexander. And we are so honored to have him on this morning. So oh, this morning, this evening, <laughs> words for the soul, praise God. Um, it's doing something different for me right now. I don't know what, what it's doing right now, but that's okay. Go ahead and like, tag, and share, and let them know that we are live. Praise God. We're going to be talking about stop, mind, okay, stop, this, wait this, a minute. This, it's blinky. Let me find out what's going on. Let me get to my broadcast part and maybe that would help it out. Let's see. Okay, just a minute. Let's see if we get this. Hold on just one moment. We're gonna, all right, there it goes. It should stop right there. All right. Woo! I can't, I can't be this one to get your attention. Can you tell that? It was like announcing, attention, attention. Words for the soul is coming on. I don't know why we're getting all that flashing. But anyway, go ahead and like, tag, and share. Like, tag, and share. And share, I'm going to go ahead and um, give some introductions again since we are having some stuff going on. Hey, Pastor Doshi, thanks for joining in. Tiny, thanks for joining in. Word for the soul. We are on episode 113. Yes, 113. Praise God. Talking about stop mind reading and clarify expectations. Words for the soul come to uplift, to encourage, to inspire, to heal, to let you know that you are chosen, forgiven, accepted, and loved by God. Praise God for that. I want to open up with a quote and then a scripture. It says, to quit faulty thinking and maintain a good, healthy, emotional, and spiritual health, we must make an intentional decision to stop mind reading and to verify our assumptions by, listen to this now, by talking to people in person instead of in our heads. I'm going to read that last line. Verify our assumptions by talking to people in person instead of in our heads. That is from the Emotional Healthy Woman, pages 184, 187, and 189. Tanya, you may want to um, put that in the chat. Talking to people in person instead of in our heads. All right, now. My guest this evening is none other than Bishop Trevor D. Alexander, my exciting husband that we have been married for 34 years. I tell you, it has been wonderful. We've had our, our challenges, but I tell you, God is in the midst. I saw that right there. Like, mm, what are you talking about? Yeah, we had to learn to stop mind reading as well. So in the book that's called Emotional Healthy Relationships, Discipleship That Deeply Changes Your Relationship with Others, it's by Peter and Jerry um, Garazzo. Yes, I have pronounced it? Cazaro? Okay. In his book, the purpose of it, he says, stop mind reading. Purpose to clarify what another person is thinking instead of making assumptions. Ladies, it's not just a ladies thing, men's do too, stop assuming. The key principle to that is never assume you know what a person is thinking or feeling. And so what they say in the book, how can we stop mind reading? They have two things that they listen, but we're gonna talk about some things that we've talked about in our workshops and seminars. Ask permission to read his or her mind or to say, I think you think, is that correct? I think this is what you're thinking. Am I correct by thinking what you're saying? So Bishop, mm -hmm. thank you for being my guest on tonight. And I wanna start off with a question here. If your spouse or friend or whoever you're in a relationship says something to you that bothers you before you confront him or her, what type of question should you ask that person? Well, first I wanna go back and address it. Yes, go ahead Bishop. See. Uh, Pastor Doshi, act like we never heard this before. However, my wife has a way of switching conversations. 
in the middle of a conversation. I do. <laughs> and I'd be like, where is this coming from? Where are we talking about? This? Yeah. We were talking about this uh -huh. and she talked about something else. So I always have to bring this um, clarity because I don't know where you be going for that. <laughs> anyway, back to the question. What what is it important to do before if I'm if you or whoever the person says something? Because I don't think we we can just leave it to just spouses. That's yeah, because the relationship relationship. Yeah. But, um, if they have done something or said something that you find offensive, mm -hmm. I feel, I think we should first seek within self. Okay. Because is it really offensive or does that behavior, the comment that was made or the phrase said, mm -hmm. revert you back to something else and a past experience? Right? Okay. So it may be your issue, not the issue. Okay. So it's good to have that conversation to ask the question, where is this coming from? Where is it Secondly, from? did they do this intention? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we say stuff inadvertently, okay. not trying to hurt nobody, not trying to harm no, cause no foul, but we do um, cause pain or okay. some type of harm, and it was not intentional, right? right? So right. you ask those questions. Do you think? Because now I'm telling you, I'm, I think that's important to ask the question. Because if I think somebody has intentionally yeah, said difference. something, uh -huh. then I've got to have the conversation. Is why do you think that's okay to say that? Right. But if you didn't if I meant no harm and I'm, I don't do all my checks and balances, right. then I'll come in and say, hey, now timing. Timing is another thing too. That's a good right? oh, that's a good point. Timing is everything. Because yes. um can I go go there? Go timing. Okay. Timing is because perfect. There, there have been times when I have been perfectly innocent, haven't done anything, when you have thrown some digs at me. Uh-huh. Because you're going through some issues. You're okay. you're he said issues, woman. Women, issues. I try to be nice. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. And I don't take it offensive. Right. Because if I take it offensively, we might have a different conversation. Right. So I wait until you, you, you're in a different mood, in different headspace. Right. And then I say, hey, you know what? Um, you was kind of crabby today. Or right. You, you said that kind of mean spirited. Right. And, and then we, we have a conversation. So all three of those issues, and then I'll just check. You, you got to know your own self and, and, and the relationship you're in. Then you ask, then you make a, state, a statement and say, hey, you said this, you did this, and I, I, I took some offense to it. Oh, right. It bothered me. Okay. And let's talk, talk about, about it. it. Or can we talk, can we talk now? Mm -hmm. Or can we talk later? Because sometimes I might want to talk, you're not ready to talk. Right. So give them the option to say, hey, can we, we can come back and see you later? Well, you, tonight we're talking about stop mind reading mm -hmm. and clarify expectations. Mm -hmm. Um. I see Sonia has made it on. Thank you, Sister Sonia, for being on. I see um, Overseer Gilbert is on. Hey, go Overseer. And, go ahead and like, tag, and oh, share. Oh, by the way, the, the other oh. Overseer over here told me I need to stop calling you more. So she's going to get me out of it. Praise <laughs> the Lord. All right. The message was delivered. And if you would go ahead in this conversation, just somebody I know you know that needs to stop my reading and learn how to clarify expectations, go ahead and put their name in the chat. Hey, hey come in and join what's going on. I'm going to be putting people's name in the chat. Um, and you want to make some comments, feel free to do that as we can continue on. Yes, can sir. I, can I give a really quick example of how that came to bother us with the watch? Oh, yes, yes. please. So I don't remember what year it was now. It's okay. a years, number of years ago. One Sunday, you decided that we needed to go window shopping. Oh, yes, yes. yes. That's a good, that's a good so, example. Um, and I'm doing better in that area. So okay. yeah, let's go. Yes. So we went shopping. And you um, is it K Jew? What my name is the Jewels? I don't remember what Jewels is in the okay. And you saw this watch. You say, hey, babe, look at this nice watch. Oh, no, this pretty watch. Okay. So I think, okay, it's getting close to Christmas. Mm -hmm. I know what to get you. Right. So I purchased the watch. I, I made known to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we have a single exchange of one gift. Then right. it was just one, one gift, gift before, before uh, at midnight on um, Christmas. Christmas Eve. Okay. Right. Well, then it's Christmas. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. See, she's trying to clarify my story. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I gave you the watch. Now, I don't even know what you gave me because that's mm -hmm. how upset I was. Mm -hmm. Because when I gave you the watch, you opened it up and then you said this one line mm -hmm. that says, that's nice. Yes. Okay. You are so, expecting something right, nice. In my mind, you were supposed to go all backflips yes. and run through hoops because this was the watch. You said it was a pretty watch and I got the watch for you. And you was like, that's nice. And I was like, hold up. Uh, 
that's nice is not getting it for me. Right. You, 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 why are you saying that's nice? You said it's a nice watch. And I'm like, yeah, I said, it's the watch that you like. Yes, it's a nice watch. Now I'm not liking this though. Then you took me upstairs uh -huh. and you showed me your nice collections of watches. Right. You said, now all of these are beautiful watches. What made you think I wanted this watch? And I said, because you said it was pretty. I said, she said, it's a pretty watch. That doesn't mean that I wanted it. Exactly. Right. So I, I thought, we, we was on different wavelengths that day. And let's just say my Christmas wasn't, didn't go well that, um, that day because I felt disappointed. Now, see, that's why we have to have clear expectations. You mm -hmm. can't be mind reading. Have any of you guys went through any of that? You thought you were mind reading someone, you thought one way and they thought totally different. I know we're not the only ones. And I know God gave me this topic for us to talk on tonight. And then men want to, uh, to chime in today. Huh? Um, you know the game is coming. Game I'm gonna come on later. Like, we need to put some of those men in the chat because they need to go back and watch this. <laughs> so, with that, why is it important not to resort to threats when things don't go your way? Well, that, that threats never really go anywhere because once you threaten me, I feel like I've been threatened. Mm -hmm. I go on a defensive. Beautiful, right? yeah. So if I go on a defensive, are you really gonna get to what you think you're gonna get it to? Uh -huh. Because whatever you say, I have feel that I have to defend myself. Right. right. Then I'm not really listening to you from a place of clarity. Correct. I'm listening to you. So hold up. Where's my opening so I can get in? Yeah. And get my lick in. Right. Mm -hmm. So threats really don't do well. And secondly, this is me, y'all. Okay. She ain't my mama or my daddy. Right. Right. I got threats all along growing up. You did too. Mm -hmm. Boy, if you don't stop, I'm gonna give you something fast. All right. right. Those are threats. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't talk back to them, right. right? But I could talk back to you, right? Right. So that's not going to go well. So well. threats really don't do well. Now, why do we need to do? I think the question is, why do I feel that I need to resort Sorry to, to threats, threats ah. in order to get my point across? That's another uh, issue. Oh, I, like I think that. that's a real issue. I think that's an awesome question because when we want to um, get clear expectations, we need to say. <laughs> Did you say that? Thank you, Minister Maggie. Vaughn, for, <laughs> yeah, for joining us, Minister Grantson and Maggie. Thank you. She said she feels you. Mm -hmm. Because I remember one time, and we shared this plenty of times, you were in the shower, and we were getting ready for church, and you opened the, the, the well, shower. Now, you came in and said something. Yeah. And I thought it said, you said, we, because we, we're going to be late. Mm -hmm. Then when I slide that shower back kind of fast and aggressively, yeah. I said, what you say? You said so and so called and said they're going to be late. That's okay now. Slide it back close. Then you said, What you thought I said? And I said, The about it. <laughs> so clarifying mm -hmm. what someone has said or asking them, Did you mean to say this? Or was this in your heart to say, Did you really mean to say the way it came out? That's so important. Yes. So another question as we're talking about, we want to make sure we get clear expectations on today. Mm -hmm. And as Oh, and as we're doing that, if we want to have to stop mind reading and have clear expectations, let me tell you what the word of God says. Proverbs says 18 and 2, fools find no pleasure in understanding but delight in airing their own opinions. <laughs> that, Proverbs. You said it's a fool. Yes. Proverbs 18 and 13, to answer before listening, that's folly and shame. And my last one, Proverbs 18 and 15 says, the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge the ears of the wise seek it out so if we're um we're saying at our church this year in 2023 that we're going to be mature we're hearing god so if we're going to grow up and we want our relationship to get stronger we have to use wisdom and not just jump to con conclusions so with that bishop thank you let me ask you this why um well is it unfair or is it why is the partner's responsibility to prove him or self wrong? Let me say that no, one more time. While unfair, mm -hmm. is it important for the partner, your friend, or whoever relationship you in, you're in, to prove himself or herself? Is it important to do that? Okay. Man, that's a loaded question. Yeah, right? it is. Mm. The question I would need to ask first mm -hmm. what did your measurements think? Yeah, am I being sincere about it? Right. Are you measuring what's the criteria? Mm -hmm. Right. Because sometimes I'm working on a different set of criteria. Right. I I just believe the best way to prove him yourself mm -hmm. uh, is to be the best version of you you can. All right. Because once I present me as the best version of me, 
knowing that I'm still not finished, I still got work to do, right? Then I present my character, my my all of that with it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm using my own measurements, not okay. yours. Okay. Because we might not be on the same page. It's not a checklist, right? right? Unless you give me a checklist. <laughs> Most people, would, most people but don't, don't do have that. a checklist. Yeah, if right. you give me a checklist, then I can know what I'm what you're measuring me against, right? So let's for instance, you might be measuring me against your daddy. Okay. But I didn't grow up in your house. Correct. So I don't know all of your daddy's characteristics. I do now, but not all of them. I know some of them, right? So when we first started out, if that was your measuring stick to a certain degree, it was. But I could be pass or fail based on a set of um characteristics you're using. That I it, that I didn't see in my house. Right. For instance, in your house, they were lovey, touchy, feely, huggy. Yes, they were. Now, does that mean that's my my character? Is 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 because I'm not that I'm I don't have good character. Not at all. Well, I'm just saying. So yeah. I, I, we need to understand what what is that much what am I trying to prove? Right. So yes, it's important to have good character. It's good to have good um, um, ethics and morals. All of those are one thing. Right? Now the Bible does share. Something that I'm supposed to be right, right. of good report and all right. those things, right? Mm -hmm. I get that, and I think that's what I I try to live up to. However, you may be using a set of standards that is biblical as well as practical or as uh, relational okay. from whatever, right? So this is no this is no news to you all. Um, this is my second marriage, right? Mm -hmm. You pay for some stuff that you didn't do. Correct. And it was unfair to hold you to a set of standards that you have. Right. You never met this woman. Right, correct. And That's you're good. paying dividends on things that she did. So they was, right. it was wrong. It was wrong. That's why it's important to have healing words. Right. You got to make sure when you're saying something to someone that is sincere mm -hmm. and that you're telling them how you're feeling and why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Hey, Miss Lydia. Hey, Miss Alaire, good to see you on tonight. Miss Rosalinda, Miss, that's my coaches on today from Scribner's Boxing. Woo woo! woo. Oh, that's Thank you. Okay. For being on tonight. I, I'm still not joining the, the club. But I support you all I can. <laughs> Y'all gonna take the work. As we talk that. about expectations mm -hmm. and validating, because we want to stop being mind readers and make clear expectations, we have to consciously be aware of what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. Two, we have to be realistic. Mm -hmm. This means that there is evidence to support that the expectation is reasonable. Either it has been done in the past or the person has the capacity or willingness to do it. I, ah, I, go I, ahead. Let me back up. Okay. Which one? You the and conscious? I. But it was okay. this. Okay. Before we walked down that aisle, we started planning our future together. Yes, sir. Uh, we laid out some things that we wanted to see in the marriage. Yes, we did. Um, we were very intentional mm -hmm. of laying out what you thought I should do. Even yes. though I messed up some areas, um, such as what you what's for dinner. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I can yeah. remember that day. Um, but we laid out expectations. expectations. Mm -hmm. There were one expectation that you did not make fully known okay. till later on that you wanted to go back to school to make oh yes. yes 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 i'm going to be transparent today because be transparent she always throws up like i'll be the one messing up all the time <laughs> so uh so you you took you three attempts to finish your math yes right. and the reason with three attempts because we have three three dollars yes we did and you can say every time i try to finish my master's you always make me pregnant. Yeah, I made you pregnant. Yes, by myself. Yes, right. I did say that. Yes, you did. Oh, yes, I know I did. you did. <laughs> and I, I did. Yes, I, I did. I was like, hold up now. Last I checked, it was two of us, right? Yeah. However, once I fully understood this was your dream, yes, and one of the things you wanted to accomplish, it was okay. Let's do this thing. Right. right? Yes. It was, and we we was all in. Secondly, when you wanted to go for your superintendent certification, yeah. you said to me, "I really want this." I said to you, what's the cost? You gave me the cost. I said, okay, I did some quick math. I said, we can do this. Right. We just had to cut back here, cut back here. We can do this. And we did. Okay. It was a year long for, um, let's wait, year long. Let's leave it over yeah. here. Probably, yeah. Yeah. No, we are going back and forth. Right. And yeah, yeah, it was anyway. Um, and then you 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 did that thing, yeah. right? Those were your clear educational goals that were not in the beginning mm -hmm. laid out for me to understand. However, right. in the middle of the of the, the this marriage, this relationship, 
you added something in there. We have to go back and make adjustments. So you had to come back to the table. Yes, that's the point. Go. You had to, have come to back. make an adjustment. After you threw some shades at me. But the thing is, you have to come back and mm -hmm. communicate. <laughs> she looked at me at the table. She threw shade at me. I looked up. Yes, he did. Uh, trying to put in there, stop mind reading. And if you had not, Pastor Sheila, thank you for joining us this evening. We're just having fun. Are you finished with this topic before you started with that topic? Ooh. Am I the only one who's done that? You think it's talking about so much at one time. You say, oh, wait, let's go back. Have we finished this, this conversation before we change to the next subject? Because he has to do that for me. I don't know if anybody has done that to you in your relationship, because okay. I know. You have a brilliant mind. Okay. Right. And you do, I'm just not being funny, but you do have a brilliant mind, right? And you sometimes are so advanced in your own mind that you don't move the head. <laughs> However, I'm not in your mind and I'm not reading. So then sometimes we on this level of conversation, yeah. you made a shift. Now yeah. I'm trying to figure out where we are with this. Is it halftime already? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh uh -huh. man, thank you, Latasha, for joining us. Yes, sometimes you can be in a conversation. It can be somebody you're just getting to know and they're talking about something and they have changed the subject and you're like, but you didn't let me know you're changing the subject. Clarify, ask them, have we finished this particular subject? Did I get understanding? Because I want to make sure I'm not thinking wrong about what's, whatever is going on. So that's important. Next thing, it has to be agreed upon. The person, the other person has agreed, has agreed to the expectation by saying yes. Just because you've given them clear expectations and say, um, I expect us that we're going to do such and such and such. They have to agree to it. You may be so demanding and you made that your expectation, but if I don't agree to it, it, it doesn't mean anything. You got to make sure you have clear expectations and that other person agrees to the expectation. I see you laughing right there. Talk to me about that. Come can, on. Can we talk about budgets? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we talking about money, y'all. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Stop mind reading. Hmm. Well, this, this, this is not mind reading when it's in black and white. Yes. Love, red, love right? it, and, love it. And then how often do you bring that? How often do we not keep up with the budget? We not keep up with the budget. I don't know. <laughs> we won't go into that. Did you see how I just brought my tone down? Because whew, most of the time it's me. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Anyway, clear expectations, right? Clear expectations. And we operate on a set of fucked up. Yes. Assumptions. Yes. And there's clear ways how we operate. Yes. And budget is one of those. Mm -hmm. However, however, we've gotten better these days. Oh, yes, we in have. the last couple of years, we've gotten better. Oh, yeah. And whenever you do something, typically, this is how it works, y'all. She's going to break the budget and it's going to say, when I get home, well, after a beautiful meal, say, oh, by the way, I, I bought this and I bought this and I bought that. Oh, I love when you buy something like a dress or something and mm -hmm. put it in the closet. And after about two weeks, you bring it out and I say, hey, was that new? Oh, no, I've had this thing. I've been in the closet. Yeah. I've learned all of the tricks of the trade, y'all. <laughs> I'm not the only one who's done that. I know. No, I'm not the only one. She was laughing. Yes, she I called you out. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 it's in that, in, we're laughing and having fun. But in doing so, make sure you get clarity that that does not cause a large argument. Be, be willing to talk about it and expectations. And that, that's so important. For me, a budget is a guideline. It's not a uh, make or break. It. Right. right. It's not a, you know, so I don't never really get upset when you spend a little bit more than we're supposed to spend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's just important that we talk Off. about it. Off. I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about how we grow in respect mm. with one another. Mm. That's so important. Mm. To get, if we're going to stop mind reading and give clear expectations, we have to grow in respect. So, Bishop, can we talk about that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, share. Oh, I definitely <laughs> will do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, one of the things that how we have grown together, right, is. Um, oh, uh, 
What about when I say yes or I understand, but I'm still confused? Who, who's in That's a good question. question. Okay. When you say yes, but you understand, but you're still confused. Ask for clarity. clarity. Ask the person for clarity. Yeah, because mm -hmm. um, sometimes things are maybe it's clear in my mind, and I may have thought I've done a wonderful job presenting this information to you. But this because it's clear in my mind, I mean it's clear in yours. And sometimes if it could be helped if it's written down. Right. Sometimes on paper makes it clear, or graphs or whatever, whatever it may need to advance the agenda, that's what it needs to be. What did Maggie say about the budgets? They um, just said that they we, we need to start a budget mm -hmm. right before you mentioned budget. Oh, okay. It makes it it makes a difference because you are on the same shit in music and helps you to move forward. And that's important. And Pastor Jeff asked that question okay. last um, the last question. Thank okay. you, Pastor Jeff. We appreciate you. Thank you for showing up there. Our team's not playing, so we're good. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I think back to this point, but um, I'm trying to see if we have a good example when things when I thought it was clear and I don't anything come to mind right now. However, you are good at asking questions. I think sometimes too many questions, but you ask questions, mm -hmm. right? And it's up to me to listen to the question and to try to find a way uh, that is easier for you to repeat exactly what I just said. And if that was confusing, and I repeat exactly what I just said, mm -hmm. it's not gonna work. Right. So even when I'm in the classroom, I do the same thing in the classroom. I, I, okay, if I state something, then it didn't work. Now I gotta find another way, way to approach the same topic, right? Sometimes it's something more practical. Sometimes it's an example. I, uh, whatever the case may be, you know, I teach a grown of adults, um, well, it's college level. Okay. And sometimes their critical thinking is not what it should be. Okay. Right? So sometimes you have to get, um, get them a trail of crumbs to go down so to get it a little easier to have to uh, understand. Oh. Here goes a question. Overseer asks, do you get frustrated when you are questioned? No. Well, I, I think she doesn't train me that way because you ask a lot of questions. But you know, I think about when you said college students, there's college students I know that in your classroom will challenge you just oh, to yeah. see if you're knowledgeable oh, about yeah. the topic that you're on. And people will challenge you in a relationship to see if they can push a button mm -hmm. to make you react or respond the way that they think they can have the upper hand. So you have to allow yourself to say, you know what, um, this, this, this afternoon while we were in church, I was talking to our young people about having the fruit of the spirit so that we allow ourselves not to get frustrated because people question us because sometimes we may think or we portray that we have clarity when we're giving instructions or giving our expectations and it's not clear. So it would not be fair to get frustrated to the other person. I would say unless um, they're doing it intentionally right. to I, push your buttons. Yes, I would say you gotta take everything in stride. Right? There you go. The Bible said we, we have to be ready to give an answer when, when an answer is coming. But if, if it's done with folly in, in, in process, I don't entertain folly. That's right. right. That's but right. But if it's really in uh, meaningful question and I give an answer, and sometimes it's more complex. So what I say in my classroom, I'm gonna give you the, the fifty uh, the twenty thousand feet answer. Mm -hmm. However, unless you and I have a conversation, I take you to fifty. Okay. But I don't want to time everybody else's time. Right. Now, after I give the twenty, and and it's somebody, hey, go a little deeper. Then I go in. But I go off the field of the class. I've been doing been teaching for twenty five plus years. Yeah. So um, I do know there's people who want to challenge me, um, and I just love it. I really do. You do. That, I do. That, I love that it. That charges like, you. I, it does. I, 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 I'm thinking, it. you think I'm a rookie? And listen, please, please y'all forgive me. Like, you think your little question is going to get me off my game? Yeah. yeah. I love that. And I, I know some people have gone through that as well. But Bishop, we're going to wrap it up with this last yes, thing. Yes. Yes. So you want to go watch yes, I do. Sharing your feelings in a relationship. We're not mind well, we reading. We didn't get to the um, that one respect. Here. We didn't do the respect. Oh, about, do the respect. You're yeah. going to be respecting, then do yeah. the feelings. Yeah. So respect starts with give and take, right? Mm -hmm. um, with you and I, we had to come to an understanding. Yes. You like opera. I do. Right? And I, I had an opinion about opera, but I've never been to the opera house. Okay. You remember that? Yeah, I do. And you kept talking about opera, 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 opera. I didn't go with it. Right. However, mm -hmm. You started trying to learn football. Yes, I did. Very good example. You asked about 50,000 questions during the game. Mm -hmm. I didn't get frustrated. No, you didn't. I, I answered your question, 
try to give you examples. Hey, watch this. This is what's going to happen. This is why this flag went down, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So as you started making this 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 attempt to understand football, I said, well, I can make an attempt to understand. Go to the opera. We went to the opera. Yes, sir. I liked it. Went mm -hmm. to the symphony. I liked, I liked it. it. So it's it's learning to grow in respect. What you you like? I gotta be able to um. Make those adjustments and all of that. Sometimes we have to compromise. And yes. then you find out you think you don't like something because you've not experienced it. Mm -hmm. Does not make sure that, that you're not going to like it. So, and it just challenges our thinking, our culture, mm -hmm. bringing us up into deeper awareness what's going around in well, our you community. Mentioned that real quick. I know we're going to yes. get off. But that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, we, we come from two different cultures. cultures. Yes, we right? do. And that was another thing we had to work on. Yes. And culturally, what is accepted here? may not be accepted over here. Yeah. But again, we laid those things out when that. I love that. Something we didn't know that was going to be a roadblock. Then we talked about it. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. So sharing our feelings. Um, it is what? It's almost good time. Or you want to pick it's, up that on next time? Yeah. yeah. OK. We so, are next week, by the way. <laughs> we said we were going to um, head off at 6.30 today. But I did, yes. Um, but we wanted to whet your appetite for the month of February. We're going to be talking about relationships, going deeper. Um, I want to share what we're talking about next week, talking about listening, listen incarnationally. We have to learn how to listen. And we'll be talking about how to share your feelings and to go deeper with that, our deeper thoughts with one another. And not being afraid or timid to share how you think, how you feel, and how they respond. Because some people respond in a way it's not positive and it puts you down. And you say you want to get into the to the game. You put a person back on the bench because you're not being kind with your words or what you're sharing. So we want to thank you today for being with us with Words for the Soul. Reminder, Tanya, remind you, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, it is True Vine Church Essay, where you can go back and visit a lot of other topics, uh, Words for the Soul and as well as our worship time in church today. But we're going to ask Bishop, our awesome guest, if he would close us out in prayer. And I'm going to ask you to meet us again on next Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. as we continue to share words from the soul. Bishop, if you would close us out. You don't want to hear my preaching? Yes, I do. Okay, yes. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking. You've been my guest. You know how my show goes. Yes, you do. I guess my close, it, close us I, out I with this. You're wise today. You're wise, sir. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I think if I were to leave you my parting thoughts uh, till next week mm -hmm. is relationships is really work. It is work. I don't care. Oh, the... somebody put that in the chat. Relationships are work. Yes. Friendships, um, marriage, family, it's work. So relationship, right? If you split those in half, it's got to be relational. But a ship carries you, right? Mm -hmm. It transports you. And it's moving sometimes because of a motor or mm -hmm. wind. There's something that called the ship to move. All right. And in your relationship, which is work, you need to find what moves you. Mm -hmm. What is that motivates you? What causes the relationship to move forward? However, there's going to be some times if you come if you're using a, a sailboat okay. when there's not much wind and it's mm -hmm. kind of stagnant, right? And when you get in those areas, that's when you got to work the hardest. Yes. Becoming stagnant. Is easy. Oh, come on now. Very easy. And I'm going to close out really. I remember when you first started working out with uh, what's the name? Roadrunners. Um, Roadrunners, what? San Antonio Roadrunners. San Antonio, there you go. Yes. San Antonio Roadrunners, you were training for your first marathon. Yes. And you would get up every Saturday morning to go running. And after, like, that was August, right? Around about November. I'm like it's December. December. So yeah, but it was like November. I'm like, you're going every Saturday morning. Every. Saturday morning was our time to just chill, sometime lay in bed and catching up with the week. And I said to you one day, I said, you know, we're not careful. I can get used to this. And then we have to make some adjustments, right? But you're willing to come and talk to me. Yes. Yes. It wasn't working for me. And that's important because if you feel like you're not getting the attention from your friend for those in your relationship and you're not listening, that's how something else can come in because you've opened the door because you're not being. Well, you broke protocol. Yeah, so like, that's good. When you said you were going to get involved with this, well, I don't know if I asked the right question. Right. Probably maybe, that's, maybe I just made an assumption. Oh, right? that's good. Right? Really but good. I, I didn't know you were going to be going every Saturday. Right. And then I'm waking up and looking over to the bed and it's, it's empty. 
That's very good. You broke protocol. No, I had a calendar. So. You broke protocol. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so, um, oh, by the way, in church, you hit me, y'all, and all the women that's on here <laughs> act like they didn't see anything. Women, I'm calling every last one, y'all. Yes, she I did like this. Uh, 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 oh, no, that one, yeah. mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> uh, you this pastor, you so nice, Grant, Sheila. Uh, I'll call every last one. You know, Vera, y'all act like nothing happened. Okay, uh, let me pray. <laughs> so, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we have get ready to. Uh, well, in this broadcast, mm -hmm. next week being Valentine's Day, and the time that we have set aside, and we call it Sweetheart Day, whatever names you want to call that. Uh, Valentine's Day is every day. But some, this is the day we buy the gifts, the chocolates, and whatever we buy um, to recognize those who are special to us, those who have a special place in our heart. We also recognize there's some people that are in our hearts that are not with us yeah. because they have gone to be with the Lord. So we pray for those who are feeling a sense of loss, a sense of loneliness. Mm -hmm. We pray for those relationships that have become stagnant. Yes. Who yes. they don't see growth, they don't feel really growth. Mm -hmm. That you jumpstart, you just um, cause the, the the heart throb to to revitalize. Mm -hmm. If you get the, the, the defibrillator moving again, God, yes, yes, cause yes. a heart to flutter for each other. God, mm -hmm. it, it 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 can happen. We've yes. seen it. Yes. And so God, we ask you that you look at these relationships that we can sit at the table. And come to an understanding. The scripture said, and all that getting, get understanding. So we pray for the couples who are struggling that they will get an understanding. And we pray for those whose relationship is strong and vibrant. Yes. Because you really got a target on you. Yeah. Because that's the enemy wants to come and destroy that. So others who are watching will give up hope. Yeah. So we pray now that you, those relationships that are strong and vibrant, you protect them. You cause, yes. you cause that borders to, boulders to be around them so the enemy yeah. cannot penetrate. Thank and the Lord let the light keep on flickering and let love continue to grow. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. 